Hey everyone, it's James from the Fit RV, and yes, I know I need to wash the van, um, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. So, we recently had some pretty severe engine trouble with Lance here, and without getting too deep into it, when the technician tore the engine apart, he took the thing completely apart, he found evidence of a failed thermostat. And it was his conclusion that that failed thermostat led to a kind of chronic overheating, and that overheating then led to all of our problems. And I'd like to have that not happen again, so that's what I'm looking into today. Now, this is going to be of particular interest to those of you with ProMaster RVs because the dash temperature gauge in this RV does not work like you think it does. Okay, you see that temperature gauge on the dash in your ProMaster is not programmed to tell you the actual coolant temperature. It's programmed to reduce service calls, and the way it does that is by, by buffering, so it always shows you a temperature that's kind of about midway. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in a moment. But the reason why that's important to me is because that buffering makes it impossible to detect a failed thermostat until it's too late. Because let's face it, if I had seen a vehicle that was on the verge of overheating for like a month, I would have taken it in. Um, so the pro that's, that's the problem. What am I going to do about it? Well, the answer is pretty simple, because it's not that Lance here doesn't know what his coolant temperature is. He knows. I just need to get that information to where I can do something and, and comprehend it. So all you need to do is to query that information out of the vehicle's onboard computer system and then display it to you somehow in the cab. So that's what we're going to do. Come on. Okay, now there are quite a few products out there that will handle this situation for you, and they all work in kind of the same way. What they're going to do is they're going to plug into your vehicle's OBD port. Now that's going to be typically on the left, kind of below your steering wheel. They're going to plug in there. That's the same port that a mechanic would use if they wanted to see why your check engine light was on, for example. They're going to query the information, and then they're going to display it to you somehow. There are lots of them out there, and we'll put links to a couple of the popular ones on the article that goes with this video on the Fit RV website. But the one I've chosen to use is this one. This is the Ultra Gauge Blue, and this is the whole thing right here. Now, to be clear, we have no affiliation at all with Ultra Gauge. In fact, I just ordered this online and paid full retail for it. But there are a few reasons I went with this one, and the first reason is that the install is super easy. In fact, you just saw me uninstall it. So basically what it does is it queries the information and then broadcasts it over Bluetooth, and then you'll wind up displaying that in an app that's on your phone. And in my case, I'll be using this iPhone here. So the install, again, super easy. There are no wires to run. It doesn't get any easier than that. Now, the other reason I chose this one is because right now we've actually got two vehicles, two RVs that I'd like to monitor. We've got Lance, our own RV here, and then we've got an RV to us on loan from Winnebago. And so if I want to monitor that one to swap it from one vehicle to another, I just uninstalled it and I'll just install it on the other vehicle and we're good to go. But enough of that, let's see how it works. All right, and we're reinstalled. Now, I'm not going to show you how to install and pair and set up the app. The Ultra Gauge people kind of have their own videos for that, and I don't need to remake those. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm setting up to use the app, and then we're going to take a short drive so you can kind of see the, the temperature gauge problem. Now, as far as uh, the display, we all know you should not be playing with a cell phone while you're driving, right? So to make this easy to see, I got this little uh, CD player iPhone mount that kind of runs in the CD player slot. And I didn't figure that was too big of a loss to give up that CD player slot because I think the last time I used it, I was playing like Jesus Jones or something in this on a CD. So anyway, enough of that. Let's go for a drive. Okay, now we've already been driving around a bit today. So one thing you'll learn when you start watching this is that this vehicle does not cool down very quickly. And you'll notice here, even parked, the coolant temperature is at 156 degrees. Yet the temperature gauge, oh, look at that. It's just a little bit below halfway. So let's start her up and go for a drive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find some hills so that we can uh, really heat this thing up. Okay, haven't made it out of the neighborhood yet. We're already up to 178 degrees. And that is the spot where the dash temperature gauge will remain forever. It will never move from that spot. But watch. Oh, we're up to 181 now. All right, we're going to go find some hills now. Buckle up.
All right, so we've been driving a couple minutes now, and the coolant temperature is somewhere around 212 degrees, and that's kind of where it stays normally. Um, but it's worth noting that there are a bunch of other gauges you can show on here. Like right now, I've got load, coolant, and, or coolant temperature, and speed showing. But there are other ones you can show, like there are a bunch of trip gauges, or you can show RPMs, even though you've got that on the, on the dash anyway. Um, one interesting one I found in just playing around is the, the temperature inside the catalytic converter, which gets up insanely high, like 1400 degrees or something ridiculous like that. And that was kind of interesting. Anyway, plenty of other gauges to pick from, and they're all based on things that your onboard computer is monitoring. So those are going to vary from vehicle to vehicle. All right, so we're climbing a hill. We've got the temperature up to 223. And lo and behold, look at the temperature gauge on the dash. It's still just a touch below halfway. Look at that. With the actual temperature, well, it dropped two degrees now. It's down to 221. But there we go. All right, so it's worth noting that you don't actually have to keep your phone turned on all the time here on the dash if you're worried it's gonna run dead or something, which is gonna bring me to the third reason why I went with the Ultra Gauge Blue, and that's alarms. So you can set the Ultra Gauge app to sound an alarm, like visual and audio alarm on your phone if your temperature gets out of a certain range. And I've got that set to 230, and we've never made it there. So, and you can set alarms for other things too, like, like RPMs or other temperatures or whatever. So you can set alarms and you don't have to keep looking at your phone all day to make sure your temperature is in range. So that's another cool feature of this particular app. And we are home. Coolant temperature is still just 214. So what we saw is that we had like a 160-ish to 220-ish. We had like a 60 degree swing in the coolant temperature and that produced a movement of exactly zero on the in-dash temperature gauge. So the in-dash temperature gauge doesn't, isn't really very helpful for much of anything. Now, if you were watching closely, you may have noticed I actually have a check engine light that came on during this thing. So it's another cool feature of the ultra gauge is that I can check this out. So let me take this and let's check out what that, let's see, get trouble codes. Check engine light on, trouble code, IAT, which I believe is intake air temperature, sensor one, circuit high input. So there's some sort of a problem, can you see that? Some sort of a problem with my intake air temperature sensor, which is interesting. I think I have that displayed on one of these pages. Oh, yeah, see there, it says my intake air is minus 40 degrees, so I'm pretty sure it's not minus 40 degrees out right now. So it looks like I do have a problem with my intake air temperature sensor. Guess I need to take it in. And there you have it. So that's what I'm gonna be doing to monitor the coolant temperature and a bunch of other stuff in Lance while we're driving along from now on. And I have to say, I'm kind of befuddled as to why I hadn't hit on something like that sooner considering how easy it was. So if you're interested in any of the products you saw in this video or you just want to participate in the discussion, come on over to the FitRV.com website. I'll have a link in the YouTube description right below. And that's where you can leave comments and I'll have links to the stuff that I showed. And now I'm going to take Lance getting washed. That's it for now. See you later. Bye.